Hello, I'm MC Mettinger, and I'm a worship associate here at Horizon. I'm delighted to welcome you to our worship service this morning. If you'd like to learn more about our church, please visit our website, horizonuu.org. We also invite you to our virtual coffee hour at 11.30 every Sunday morning. The link can be found on our website also. With no further announcements, our worship service will now begin. Take a moment to release all of the air in your lungs. Expel every molecule from your body. As you enter this worship experience that exists not within the same space, but together in the same moment, we are guided by the same values and intentions. Please join me now in saying together the words of our affirmation. Love is the doctrine of our church. The quest for truth is its sacrament, and service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge in freedom, to serve humanity in harmony with the earth, thus do we covenant together. Find a stillness, hold a stillness, let a stillness carry me. Find the silence, hold the silence, let the silence carry me. In the Spirit, by the Spirit, with the Spirit giving power, I will find true harmony. Seek the essence, hold the essence, let the essence carry me. Let me flower, help me flower, watch me flower, carry me. In the Spirit, by the Spirit, with the Spirit giving power, I will find true harmony. One tenet of the free church is that we share our generosity and our gifts with those in our community. This month's Share the Plate offering will benefit the Athea House, an organization committed to reproductive justice. Hear these words from their mission statement. Transforming the lives, health, and overall well-being of black women and girls by providing refuge, education, and resources. We act to ignite the communal voices of black women, resulting in our full achievement of reproductive freedom.
Phyllis's Orange Shirt, written by Phyllis Webstad, illustrated by Brock Nicole. Since 2013, every year on September 30th, we wear orange shirts to honor residential school survivors like Phyllis. We honor their experiences and the experiences of their families. Orange Shirt Day is an opportunity for First Nations, local governments, schools, and communities to all come together in the spirit of reconciliation and hope for future generations of children. It is a day to reaffirm that every child matters. Phyllis is so thankful that children are learning about First Nations history. It is something she learned little about when she was at school. It is important that we know our and each other's histories. She is overjoyed that you are taking part and learning the true history of the First Peoples of Canada. For more information on Orange Shirt Day, visit www.orangeshirtday.org. For some families, the topic of residential schools is very sensitive and difficult. If you need crisis support, please contact the Indian Residential Schools Resolution Health Support Program at 1-866-925-4419. Little Phyllis lived with her granny on the Dog Creek Reserve. They would put berries, garden, and catch fish to preserve. There were not many kids with whom Phyllis could play because they went to residential school far, far away. One day, Granny took Phyllis to town. It was exciting to see so many people around. Granny took Phyllis to a shop full of clothes with hats for your head and socks for your toes. Phyllis picked out a shirt that was so orange, shiny and bright and Granny bought it for her to wear with delight. On the first day of residential school, Phyllis just couldn't wait. She wore her orange shirt so that she would look great. But when she arrived, her mood started to change. The place was so cold, unfriendly, and strange. Her bright orange shirt was taken away, and she worried about how long she would stay. At public school, she was taught how to read and write neatly by her teacher who treated her so very sweetly. Phyllis liked her teacher but missed her granny so bad, along with the garden and home that she had. And then when finally summer arrived, Phyllis returned home where she thrived. We wear our orange shirts to remember that every child matters and not just in September. We honor First Nations people and reflect on how every child is special and deserves our respect. Sacred spirit that flows through all creation, enable us to care for all. Allow us to alleviate the suffering of the marginalized. Enable us to liberate the oppressed. This I pray in the sanctity of our collective existence from now until the seventh generation.
Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that, the passing there had worn them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I... I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. There is so much going on in the world. It's easy to let things slip by the wayside with our distractions like cell phones and daytime jobs and Netflix binging. It's easy to lose track of things that matter, even things that don't matter for the matter of fact of that. Now, if we think about the original purpose of the observances, they were a mixture of spirituality, psychology. They connected us with the world around us, the universe above and below, other people, other animals, to remind us of what was important, to reflect all these things that we still try to continue on with modern day observances, but we're just far too distracted on occasion. Observances like Earth Day and Epiphany and the 4th of July, there are just one square on our yearly calendar. And depending on how you church, be it a Sunday morning or say a Wednesday evening, these occasions that we set aside for worship are just a brief moment that causes our routine to pause. But just as those observances in time and memorial as they are now, the joys and concerns that we have don't just stop. They continue. pain, that joy, it continues on um, and it continues to affect us. We just create moments now where we try to process them so that way we can better deal with them later or maybe non-deal with them. Now I am new relatively to the concept of organized religion. I didn't grow up in church, as many of us will describe ourselves. If we were in a church, it was because somebody was getting married, getting uh, buried, or it was because scouts, and that's just 
where the event was being held at. And for a variety of reasons, my parents absolutely decided not to do anything church related. We grew up, I grew up in, during the time when Waco had just happened. We lived not too far. Um, my father always mentioned that he wanted me to have my own mind and not force some ideal on me, which is actually something that we incorporate into our own UU religious education. It's something that's slightly different from most other religious traditions and how they approach religious education for youth, adolescence, so on. Now, my mother comes from an indigenous family and some of the traditions that have managed to survive were incorporated into my upbringing. But something that was passed along through that stream of conscious that was not actually part of her tradition, but has now been incorporated, was kind of a fear of how religion is approached. Because back then it was the priests were going to come and take away the children and send them off to boarding schools. Um, and there's kind of still a notion that if you're bad, that might still happen. How we approach worship and observances is slightly different, and we are actually scared of how to actually observe certain things. Now, we recently observed Orange Shirt Day, which is a commemoration both in present-day United States and present-day Canada that something has been going wrong with religion, with education in these two present-day governments since their foundation. It is to recognize that there are people that have been harmed by community, by spirituality, and continue to be neglected by the state and by those around them. <clears throat> We're recognizing that there is harm and that it needs to be healed. Now, the point that I am stressing about observances is because, as I was saying, it's a brief moment in our routine that many of us, whether intentionally or not, more than likely not, it pops into our consciousness and then we move on to the next thing because we have to or because something else is more important at the moment whatever the reason, but the fear that we have with observances such as Orange Shirt Day is that myself, my family, that we're going to be forgotten and that next year is going to come around. And the body count of the children that are found is going to be astronomically higher. And I'm going to hear this is the first time I've heard of this again and again, or that nothing is going to have actually changed in our public education system, in our religious education uh, of the individual churches and traditions that have been involved or have grown since the boarding schools have been shut down. there is a momentum that is created by an observance. And what we're supposed to do is actually take it with us into the world. Now, I'm not saying that you have to wear an orange shirt every single day. 
And there's certain other things I'm, I'm not stressing that you do. But life is cyclical. There is a dawn, an afternoon, a night, and then a dawn again. So we just had an observance allow that to process through you. And then eventually allow it to cycle back up and revisit it before the next observance. And this is something that we need to do with all of our observances, all of our social justice movements. Allow these momentary energized events and observances invigorate us and then allow that to process and then we revisit as soon as we are able to. We can't go full steam ahead. We will burn out. We will fatigue. We will lose endurance. What I'm bequeathing on you, the, what I'm trying to stress is that our compassion muscles have just been worked out. Now we need to allow them to rest before we go on to the next event. And if we're able to do this, we can avoid religion, we can avoid education, we can avoid everything becoming the show that this state has turned it into. That's one of the things, that, the first things I learned when I went to seminary is how the state transformed religion and turned it into theatrics. And yes, some of that is to reinforce the ideas, to make certain things attention grabbing, that salvation had steps to it and had grandeur and was memorable but then it lost its spirituality. It lost its divinity. We can't allow that. Every life is sacred here. These observances, these momentums reinforce that. So as we go forth, as the show goes on, so to say, just take a moment to breathe and whatever is important to you, whatever you are striving for, whatever you are fighting for, you can come back to it, but don't let it fall. And then what you notice for those around you, don't let them falter either. Support one another. Do more than just observe. Enjoy and blessings be. We extinguish the flame of this chalice, but not our commitment to our mission to welcome radically, love boldly, grow spiritually and serve courageously. We carry this commitment in our hearts because we envision a beloved community filled with compassion, helping all to thrive in a just world.
from the light of our leaving brings us song both brave and free, calling pilgrims still to witness to the life of liberty. When the fire of commitment sets our minds and souls ablaze, when our hunger and our passion meet to call us on our way, when we live with deep assurance of the flame that burns within, then our promise finds fulfillment and our future can begin. From the of youthful vision comes a new prophetic voice, which demands a deeper justice built by our courageous choice. When the fire of commitment sets our minds and souls ablaze, when our hunger and our passion need to call us on our way, when we live with deep assurance of the flame that burns within, then our promise finds fulfillment and our future can begin. As our time draws to a close, take a moment to take a deep breath in. May the sacred energy we have cultivated be carried with you into the world for the days and weeks to come. <laughs>